Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV in this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to go out to Falcon, Colorado, where we're going to find 10-year-old Justice Sokol. Justice, how are you doing today? Good. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing really good, too. So you've had a really exciting 2018 season uh, that was actually capped off by you winning a USAC National Championship. So tell Tell us what class that you won that championship in and how cool that was to actually get to, uh, to claim that championship. I won my first USAC national championship in the heavy Formula Mod class. And it was a really cool experience because I got to go up there not for only our awards, but I got to go up there for like the big car awards, like the four tens and all those guys i got to go up there with them and stand up on the stage yeah that was pretty cool i saw that you got a kind of marched in on and you guys had like your own quarter midget banquet and then you guys were also a part of the big usac banquet on the same night is that not correct that is correct at first we had our banquet which was the USAC 0.25 banquet and then we had then like an hour or so later we went back up and for the dinner and the awards banquet for the bigger cars right so you you was on the big stage in front of everybody I was there it was really a, a great night and everything but there's a lot of really cool things that happened to you leading up to that national championship so let's talk about a, a little bit about some of the highlights of your 2018 racing season um, some of the highlights for my 2018 racing season was getting my first USAC National Championship, obviously, and getting a second place in Heavy World Formula and a third place in Heavy 160 for that, and just doing good at the Grands, getting my first B mod, or not my first Winter Nationals win, my first B mod win at the Winter Nationals. My, um, excuse me, my first win in heavy formula mod at Texas Motor Speedway and second place at Indianapolis and then third place to close it all off for the championship at Pocono. Yeah, so you, you had a really, really exciting season and um, I was able to get to come out and watch you race in in Las Vegas and man you had a lot of really really good runs out there a lot of good competition a lot of cars and uh, you, you guys just did a, a great job out there so and a little bit about the Vegas race because it was kind of like your retirement party you're actually retiring from quarter midgets what's what's that like is it kind of a you're glad to move on but a little bit sad because you're not going to be back in the quarter midget anymore it's going to be sad to move on, but also I'm happy because I get to move into something bigger. And I get to experience, experience something new. Also, it's sad to see my friends go, but also some of my friends will be actually, will actually be going into that. So the 600 micro sprint stuff too. So you're going to be running 600 micro sprints next year. And I understand you've got a big race coming up in January and you're gonna be going to the Tulsa shootout. So how excited are you about that? I'm really excited about the Tulsa shootout. I'm gonna be running the 25S junior sprint for Curtis Boyer. And I'd like to thank him for, for letting me run his car there. So there's been a lot of big names run at that Tulsa shootout. People like Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson. And so what's it gonna be like when you get inside that and we'll just kind of call it hollowed ground there a little bit because, again, um, anybody that's kind of come through the open wheel ranks, uh, whether they've moved on to NASCAR or they're still out there running sprint cars or midgets or stuff, have, have pretty much ran through the Tulsa shootout. So, again, you're going to be on the big stage there again. I know that I got a text from your dad earlier today, and there's like 938 cars registered for that race. So... Um, it's going to be a great learning experience, and you're going out there with your brother, and he's going to be running uh, the micro sprint and junior sprints too. So um, tell the viewing audience a little bit what makes a junior sprint different than a quarter midget. 
The difference between a junior sprint and a quarter midget is that the junior sprint is a little bit bigger than a quarter midget. I don't think it's a lot, might be. But the motor size and everything, I think it's the same. It's a world formula engine, just a little faster. Okay. And the car has a wing on top of it. Car has a wing on top of it. So what do you expect out of that wing on top? Is that going to give you like more downforce and make the car stick to the stick to the dirt a little bit? Because you're going to be running on dirt now where you've normally been running on pavement. So what, what kind of changes are you going to have to make in your driving style now that you're going to be on dirt? That I'm going to be using the brake more often. And I'm going to be having to move the wheel a lot. To get it to the corner going in, I'm gonna be hitting ruts and everything. I'm gonna, it's gonna be, it's just gonna be, it, it might be faster, it might be not. I'm not sure yet because I haven't, I've, I haven't ran a junior sprint, I mean, a 600 yet, except for just going out there and practicing it, not getting on the gas a lot. Just. Right. So you're going, to be doing, you're going to be doing the, what, what Dale Jr. called a slide job. Are you looking forward to that? Yes, I am looking forward to that. It's going to be cool doing some slide jobs. Cool doing some slide jobs. Okay, so I know that you've got a lot of great sponsors that actually help you out. Do you want to give a little shout out to your sponsors? Um, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Rainbow Sprinkler, PT Plumbing, Linear Racing, Advanced Racing, Suspension, AFCO Racing, Lin um, Wagner's Fabrication, Springs Fastener, RS Metal Fabrication, Robbie Stanley Racing, Scotch Racing Engines. Man, that's a bunch of them there. So let's talk about another thing. I, I, I think one of the things that I like most about you and Colby is that you guys have a great family and a great bunch of uh, people that actually come and follow you at the track. And I know your, 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 your papa and your grandma and, and, and Big A and, and Tony was there as well. So what's that like having such a great support um, staff like around you? It's good. I feel like I have a lot of protection around me for if something happens, I have a lot of protection. I have a good race team and I feel like we can accomplish a lot going into this next step and just try and do our best and try and figure out what to do to the cars and how the cars are going to handle for me and my brother. Just We're just going to try and learn as much as we can like we did in the quarter midges. Like our first couple of years we were learning then we were getting better and better and better and then finally we got to that point and then we accomplished a lot, and so then we just moved on. Yeah, so it, it, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. Um, you guys have done so well in the quarter midget ranks, it's time to take that next step. And I think the thing that I like that you just said the most was that you already accept that this is going to be a learning curve for you guys. And, and it's kind of weird. You guys are going to like one of the biggest races of the, of the season, almost like NASCAR. They start off at Daytona, so... You know, for junior sprints and micro sprints, one of the biggest races of the season is the Tulsa shootout. And that's where you guys are going to go and kind of get your feet wet. So uh, does that make you a little bit nervous or are you just really, really excited about it? Really excited about I'm not I'm not nervous yet. Getting I'm getting nervous, nervous as it goes on. But I feel like I'm confident in myself right now. Yeah, you guys will do great. I have I have no uh, reservations about that. And I know that you guys are going to be like pitted and, and you're going to have some factory support there. Some people that have done this for quite a while, they're going to be kind of there kind of showing you guys the ropes and everything. So I have no doubt that you're going to do a great job there. So one more question here before we wrap up this interview. Um, I know that you got the Tulsa shootout coming, but what are you going to be doing kind of like downtime for the rest of the winter before the micro sprint season starts up? I know you guys are in Colorado. There's a lot of cool outdoor things that you guys can do there. And uh, so tell me a little bit about what your plans are. You got any big plans for Christmas? Just go, just stay here, go to school. Just the casual until we start getting to Christmas. Then we're going to start 
doing more stuff, probably like going out to eat more and stuff like that. Cause we're on, we're going on Christmas break next week. We have that Friday off and then we're, I think we're off all the way up till I think that week after Christmas or something like that. Well, I learned something in Vegas and that is that both of you guys like Skittles and peanut M&Ms because I saw you in that bag like several times. So uh, let me talk to you about one other real quick thing. What is it going to be like to um, start to make that climb now and you know that where you want to go racing. So let, let's talk about that real quick. In your future, where do you see yourself in like five years? Where, what, what do you want to be racing? I'm in five years. Let's see, I'll be 15, I think. So let's see. Um, late models. NASCAR, NASCAR truck series, late models. They're going right to the truck series, man. That's pretty cool. That's a, that's a big ambition. I like that. 360 sprint cars, 305 sprint cars, 410s, probably not, but maybe. Yeah. A lot of, lot of different options out there for you as you start to advance in your career. So um, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. We look forward to um, an exciting 2019 season with you and following you in the micro sprint. Uh, I want to encourage everybody to go and check out JusticeSocalRacing.com. That's your website. How about your Facebook page? You want people to go and like your page? Yes. And I have one more thing to say. It has been an honor to get the Ken Rice Award at the, at the Winter Nationals. It's been an honor. So I think we're going to go back there next year. And um, since, I'm, since, I was not, since I was the winner this year, we're going to go back and pick five nominees and then get the next one. Yeah, that, and that's really cool. Let's talk about that real quick before we go off, because I forgot all about that. I'm glad you brought that up. You were the recipient of the Ken Rice Award. And what was that award all about? The award was all about just having, just basically. Pretty much on-track performance, off-track performance, having a good attitude, being a good sportsman. Being a champion on and off the track, having being a good sportsman on and off the track, having just being your best on and off the track. Yeah, and that was really cool. There were, like I said, there was only five nominated and you won that award. I was really excited to hear that. Congratulations. Good luck to you, first of all, at the Tulsa Shootout. Good luck to you in 2019. Everybody make sure to go and like Justice Sokol's Facebook page, follow him on his social media. He's gonna have a lot of exciting things coming to you in 2019. Look more here at Race Face TV for more updates as we move through the year. I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. And as I always end up all of my shows, I encourage you to go out and support local racing in your community. I know that it's winter time, but if you'll look around, you'll find some indoor racing. We'll see all of you back here with our next Race Face Spotlight show. Everybody have a great evening.